Hello, welcome to Movie Musters. Power Book 3, Raising Conan Review, made you look in Season 3, Episode 10. Don't ever say never. As power fans, we need to be wiser by now to not assume anything because things are rarely as simple as they look. And the 10th episode of Power Book 3, Raising Conan Season 3 was the kind that helps you remember why the power universe is among the greatest things on TV. Episode 10 of Season 3 of Power Book 3, Raising Conan features a kitchen standoff. Rack battling Ronnie, Lulu facing his issues head on, and Howard either getting away with it all or eventually getting his comeuppance have been the season's main plot points. And we received a lot of answers from the finale, which did not let us down. Episode 10 of Season 3 of Rack on a Mission, Power Book 3, Raising Conan. After the shocking conclusion of Season 3 Episode 9 of Power Book 3, Raising Conan, we soon found out that Rack and Marvin had neither murdered their younger brother or abandoned him. As irritable as they became with Lulu, he's still family. Even though it took them a while to grasp what kind of care their brother needed, they still wanted to support him despite their displeasure. In order to depict Lulu on screen moving past the detoxification stage and deeply immersed in his therapy, a two-week time leap was necessary. This season, with more time, However, taking us back to the later parts of his journey's beginning allowed us to see Lu Lu free from the physical effects of the booze and concentrating on overcoming the complex web of challenging emotions he has been battling. Rack Lu, not everything was intended for public consumption. Some stuff must remain near. Lu Lu, Rack, I'm talking about feelings. My emotions. Things that are mine. Things that concern me. Permalink, Rack, I'm talking about feelings. My emotions. Things that are mine. Things that concern me. I agree to receive targeted advertisements and emails. I had no idea that the hour would start with a family session with Rack, but since Lu Lu's sorrow stems so much from that strained relationship, it seemed natural that she would be the one he wanted to talk to first. Power Book 3, Raising Conan, Season 3, Episode 8, Upset Lu Lu. Unlike his relationship with Marvin, Rack and Lu Lu's chemistry has always felt more mother, son than sibling. Occasionally, a power dynamic existed which Rack frequently took use of to persuade Lulu to do what she needed him to. And Lulu began to drown in his own sadness for what he'd done when he finally pushed back against that. As you age, you come to see that a great deal of your ire toward particular things stems from unjustified pain. Rack tends to keep her fury in check, allowing it to boil just beneath the surface. She doesn't always yell at people or toss objects when they get close because, quite honestly, she can't afford to be that way. However, Rack frequently uses cutting language, and she has taken a lot of time to criticize Lulu. That's beyond her ability to dispute. Episode 10 of Jukebox and Marvin, Power Book 3, Raising Conan, Season 3. During their session, she pulls this joke about Lulu suddenly experiencing things, but then she turns the focus back to herself and her own boundaries around what she can and cannot feel. Their incapacity to listen to one another has always been one of the biggest problems between them. Both have been incorrect and made good points, but neither has been open to considering ideas beyond their own. Though there were several dramatic exchanges between the two, the one outdoors where Lulu accepted responsibility for his actions and Rack apologized was arguably the most moving. That didn't feel forced or false, rather, it felt like what they were both hoping to get from the other. Although a single professional family session won't end decades of suffering, it was undoubtedly the beginning they both needed. Lulu needs to forgive himself if he is to recover completely. Furthermore, to be honest, things might not occur. Regaining Encumbrance, Power Book 3, Raising Conan Episode 8 of Season 3. His attempt at suicide appeared to stem from the conviction that he cannot be more than who he is now, nor can he live with himself for the atrocities he has done. His incapacity to follow through with it reveals his conflicted feelings, but inside that facility, he is exactly where he should be. Hopefully, he tells his doctor exactly what he did and he probably will be. Lulu has to change the way he thinks about himself in order to be able to accept himself as he is. He wants to punish himself, and at this point, that's all he ought to be aiming for. Simply to be alright. Things there are just always changing, and you can never truly say it's for the best. This worries me about what life will be like for Lulu when he eventually returns to the South Side. Episode 10 of Season 3 of Power Book 3, Raising Conan, Concern Jukebox. It was never going to be acceptable for Rack to blow up Ronnie and Conan's business in quiet. She had to know Ronnie would do something, even though the Conan of it all might have prevented her from deducing that something would be violent. 
However, throughout the season, she has been preaching about Ronnie's uncontrollable nature, so his choice to pursue her in public shouldn't have come as a huge surprise. I don't understand how Rack doesn't have a bodyguard on duty all the time, but she eventually does, at least when she's at home. After Rack took this bold step, she felt comfortable enough to approach the large table and have a conversation when things became risky. Furthermore, I don't hold it against Snaps and Pop for essentially telling her they weren't into her. She can't be in charge of everything, nor does she get to dictate everything. She was fully aware that the things she did could and would have consequences, but now that her life was in danger, she felt the need to declare a truce. Raising Conan Book 3, Standing on Business, Season 3, Episode 8 that is not how life operates. Now, everything appeared to be rather simple in this episode, but given how things turned out, many doubts about what was real and false emerged during the hour. When Conan was informed by Famous about the shooting, Conan seemed truly shocked. Was Conan acting? We've never really known him to be a great actor. I think he wasn't, and he felt justified in his wrath at Ronnie for pushing him around the restaurant. But somewhere in between that and his kidnapping, he and Ronnie came up with a scheme to coerce Rack into giving them a large sum of money. I have no idea what to believe in any of it. Tower Book 3 Raising Conan Season 3 Episode 10 Ronnie and Conan Square Off Is it feasible that Conan and Ronnie staged the kidnapping and kept snaps and pop in the dark? Or did they also know about it? Though they were clearly aiming for the big reveal at the end, which wouldn't work if the viewer understood too much, I wish there had been more insight into the workings of this entire scheme. If Conan was behind all of this, it's a brilliant plan to get Ronnie and Rack together so he can handle the grunt work alone. Although Ronnie was never untouchable, I've been shouting to everyone who will listen that he needs to leave, and it was starting to seem like the only person who could get rid of him would be someone close to him. And since he had no one near him, Conan would have to be that someone. Devoted to work. Power Book 3, Raising Conan Episode 8 of Season 3 for a while now, they've been subtly increasing their tension, especially as it became increasingly obvious that neither of them was ready to give in to the other and that they both felt like the boss. Their mutual dislike of Rack and money led to their collaboration. It became very obvious that there was no trust there. Ronnie had become a threat that Kanana could no longer contain. Hence it was better for Kanana to kill him. Was Ronnie's passing unexpected, then? Both yes and no, in my opinion. It was definitely something to consider when Conan decided to stage his own kidnapping and pull the gun. We know Conan to be shrewd and crafty, and this was definitely the case. Tenth episode of Power Book 3, Raising Conan, Calm Ronnie. The other death that occurred in the warehouse this hour was undoubtedly more unexpected. Even though Howard has been living on borrowed time ever since we first met, he has generally been competent at defending himself despite occasional slip-ups. I believe that Howard's longevity is a result of his extreme self-interest. He's always been a lone wolf, which means having little regard for other people. However, he was so transformed by what he learned about Conan that he was able to think beyond himself. However, Howard also held the false belief that Rack, Conan, and himself were all looking out for one another, even if this was never the case. No matter how much he helped them, and he undoubtedly did at times, Howard was never their family and they would always value their basic core more than anything else. Episode 9 of Season 3 of Power Book 3, Raising Conan, On His Last Straw I sensed that Howard was leaving the room when he mentioned to Rack that the three of them formed a unit. Currently, I wasn't sure if it would be in jail or from a stray bullet, but Rack wouldn't tolerate his going on and on about turning on Marvin. Although Howard has always been a complicated person, it's possible that once he killed Shannon, his future was predetermined. He had a place as long as Rack valued him. All he could do was fall, though, as the walls closed in around him. It's strange that, when you consider his entire story arc, we never saw much of him and Conan together and what that dynamic was like. However, that does add to the legends surrounding Conan Stark. He never had a formal introduction to his father, learned about his bizarre past, nearly murdered him without realizing he was his father, and then witnessed his mother shoot him dead in cold blood. Power Book 3, Raising Conan Season 3 Episode 10, Marvin Waits Outside. That's a lot to take in, and I believe he never did during his entire life. Regardless of whether Rack murdered him or not, Tanner and Baptiste were likely pursuing Howard at full speed, ending his career. Furthermore, it was amusing to watch them question everyone about Howard when Rack was the only one who might have anything to say. Rack and Conan are basically given a second chance now that Ronnie and Howard are no longer with us. Will they choose to resolve their differences and take on the venture together? That would entail Conan accepting his mother's lies and being willing to step back. 
That's not very plausible. In my opinion, there are a lot of situations in which Conan's friendship with Snaps and Pop backfires, leaving him with little other option than to rely on Rack. Episode 9 of Power Book 3, Raising Conan, Unimpressed Rack. To top it all off, Unique is still alive, so there are a ton of ways the plot could go in the future. If you were a Unique Truther, I hope you shouted your celebration. Unique appeared lifeless. However, again, we ought to know better by now given how these series operate. We saw grown-up Conan burn and survive to fight another day. Has Unique been merely hanging out with Ronnie in the city, and keeping an eye out for the ideal moment to slip out of the shadows? The fact that Unique is still alive makes me very happy, especially if it allows us to see him and Rack again and maybe set them back against each other in the congested streets of Southside. Snaps Move, Power Book 3, Raising Conan, Episode 10 of Season 3. We can't wait for Season 3 to premiere. Everything additional you should know. Marvin lost a friend in Gerald, so you had to feel bad for him. It's significant that he continued to pay his respects, although virtually, in spite of the treachery. Season 3 should hopefully offer some in-depth looks at Marvin and Lulu. With the two brothers taking different routes, there is a lot to explore in their scenes, which I particularly enjoyed this season. Next season, everyone could be impacted by famous people getting busy. He's not a spy, but a prison celebrity. It's not visible to me. Since Crystal is expecting, it is reasonable to believe that Sean will be the child. Power Book 3, Raising Conan Season 3 Episode 10, Lunch Date. Conan swears he will stay in New York forever, whereas Jukebox just wants to get the heck out of town. Jukebox's story is made even more tragic by the knowledge that she will ultimately return and pass away in the location she so desperately wished to leave. Jukebox and Isha had such a nice relationship. If Jukebox is indeed leaving town, then it's unfortunate they never had an opportunity to investigate their relationship. It will be interesting to see where Stefano ends up in the long run. She might be able to take advantage of his fondness for Rack. Overall, this season offered plenty of enjoyment, even though progress was a little slower. Gathering Data, Raising Conan, Power Book 3, Season 3, Episode 7. Leaving things on an incredible cliffhanger will keep me excited till the next episode of the show. What were everyone's thoughts on the conclusion? What are you most anticipating? Comment below to talk about everything. I appreciate you coming along on the adventure this season.
Don't forget to like, comment, share, and subscribe for more videos. Thanks for watching.